everyone. I'm Cheryl Butler, and you're listening to the Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. This is episode number 324, titled How to Make New Friends. If you're a parent who is a bit lonely and would welcome new adult companionship, take a listen for some fun ways you can build some new parenting friendships. I've always been a very socially active person. So when I decided to stay home to raise my eight kids, I wasn't prepared for how lonely and isolated I'd feel. Granted, most people don't start their journey into parenting by having four kids under the age of three, but this reality definitely made having a social life that much more challenging. Even once I had a good routine going in my household and managed to contain the chaos, I desperately missed grown-up interaction. I honestly have no regrets about my early years of parenting, except for two things. Finding ways to make more time for myself, and establishing and keeping up with my own friendships. The great news is that no matter how busy a parent you are, you don't have to do it alone. That's why today, I've got five ways to form new adult friendships. Tip number one, bond before baby arrives. One of the things I loved while being pregnant was chatting it up with other expectant moms who I met at the doctor's office or in the baby section of department and grocery stores, at church, in restaurants, and at work. Even if you're on the shy side, striking up conversations with women who are at the same expectant situation is a great place to start. Ask questions about how the other woman is feeling at this stage of pregnancy, who her doctor or midwife is, and at which hospital birthing center she'll be delivering at. You never know who you might meet this way. I met one of my very best friends in the NICU unit of the hospital where my adopted daughter was born. The same day my newborn arrived, a woman gave birth to triplets who were nearly two months premature. We were in the NICU when those three little miracles were brought in. Because the babies were delivered by an emergency C-section, the new parents didn't have a camera with them to document the moment. After all, this was 21 years ago before having a cell phone was the norm. I introduced myself and offered to take photos of their babies with my Polaroid camera. Remember Polaroids? We quickly became friends, and although she lives in Colorado and I live in Rhode Island, we've stayed in touch for over 20 years. Since our kids are so close in age, We've had the opportunity to support each other throughout all the trials and tribulations of parenting, and we've actually visited one another a few times, too. And tip number two, join online parenting groups or events. If you find that it's difficult to meet people in your neighborhood, online groups like meetup.com and International Moms Club, which is momsclub.org, can help connect you with other parents in your area. Today's parents have major advantages in staying connected with their friends or meeting new ones than parents even 20 years ago did. Social media makes it easy. Most schools, community centers, libraries, and other local organizations post information about family-friendly activities on their Facebook or Twitter pages. This way, you can check out what's happening and plan to attend whatever suits your needs. During the past year, My local community has organized numerous events for parents. These were posted on our Chamber of Commerce Facebook page, as well as our school PTO's Facebook page. One such event that I attended this past fall was a paint and dabble fundraiser. Oh, it was so much fun. The cost of admission covered a lesson from a local artist, as well as the canvas and materials needed to paint a holiday scene, which we completed within the three-hour lesson. Appetizers and wine were also served. The turnout was terrific, and the best part was that it was attended by a group of women I normally wouldn't have had the chance to meet. We have another evening like this planned for late spring because we all had so much fun. Tip number three, visit family-friendly spots. If you want to hook up with new parenting pals, head to the spots where they congregate on a regular basis. The playground is always a sure bet, but once there, don't feel intimidated if you see other parents already hanging out together. We can all use new friends, so bring your child over to where the other kids are playing and introduce her to the group. Then you can smile and give a hello to the moms and dads that are gathered around and see where it goes. I used to go to the park at around the same time every day because I started seeing a pattern of some of the other parents going at that time too. 
By the time a couple of our kids entered kindergarten, we were all good friends. Library story hours are also a good place to hook up with other parents. Often, the kids get to participate in a craft activity after the story, which allows a few free minutes for moms to mingle and chat. We also have a couple of great toy stores in our area that encourage hands-on play in designated areas. The farmer's market is another fun place to bring your kids and get acquainted with other parents. You get to enjoy the fresh air and check out all the delicious produce, and there are often games, live music, or activities that engage kids. Remember, even if a friendship doesn't develop as a result of chit-chat with other parents, hey, at least it gets you out and interacting with other adults. Tip number four, check out your local paper. Subscribe to your local paper or visit its online version to browse the great selection of family-friendly activities happening in your neck of the woods. Check out the What's Going On section for seasonal events like movies on the beach, fall festivals, and gingerbread house making, as well as regular classes and lessons. Any of these child-friendly events are a wonderful opportunity to meet fellow parents. Tip number five, volunteer with the parent organizations. Being an active member of your community, religious organization, or school is a terrific way to meet like-minded parents. I started slowly by volunteering in my oldest daughter's kindergarten class for a couple of hours a week. Now, 15 years later, I'm the PTO president of our middle school and the advisor of the school newspaper. I've also been involved in dozens of events with all of my eight kids, and the benefits have been many. I've made strong connections with all of our schools, my kids love having me involved, and I've met two of my very best friends who I never would have known otherwise through the PTO. Don't get scared off by big-time commitments either. Simply plan on attending a few meetings and get to know the names and faces. That's all. After our PTO meetings, many of us in attendance go out for a coffee or a glass of wine, so don't rush home if you don't have to, and you just might make a friend or two along the way. What are some of the ways you've met some new parenting pals? Share them with us in the comments section at quickanddirtytips.com slash mighty dash mommy. Or you can post your ideas on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page. And you can always reach me by email at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com. Plus, visit my family-friendly boards at pinterest.com slash mighty mommy qdt. And I hope you'll be sure to sign up for the upcoming Mighty Mommy newsletter too. It's going to be chock full of practical advice to make your parenting life easier and more enjoyable. I hope you can find some time to engage in some new friendships this spring and summer. Thanks for listening, and until next time, happy parenting!